If you're new to this channel, the so rare is something I put regular weekly updates on. I show you guys how my squads are getting on, how much profit I've made. I don't hide anything. I show you guys the mistakes. I show you guys everything. It's something I do throughout the whole channel when we look to make money online through things more than likely related to football. So if you think you enjoy that, please hit the subscribe button and you'll enjoy the videos I put out. So today's video is not the normal weekly update roundup video that I do and showing you guys the results. Today we're actually going to be going through and building a limited squad. Now if you're new to so rare, the limited cards are the most common type of cards. Every player who is on the game gets a thousand limited cards, which is why they're cheap and a lot more affordable for your squad building rules. Now, the only teams you can enter these limited squads into, or the only leagues or divisions, are these Division 5s here. Now every league does have a Division 5, so you don't need to worry about that at all. You can build a squad tailored to this, or you can just go in with a Global All-Star. Now the limited squad I'm going to look to build here is going to be a mix of Challenger Europe and Champion Europe, depending on who's the cheapest and most expensive. Now that means we could actually, if it's a full squad of Champion Europe players, put it in to... The Champion Europe Division 5 instead. You can see only 40 people have registered for this coming game week. There's still two games left, so they might put in more, obviously. So don't take that as gospel yet. But then we've got Challenger Europe down in Division 5 as well, where there are a bit more. But you can see the prizes are a lot better for these Division 5 pools, especially if we look at, say, for example, Global All Star Division 5. There's 840, but nearly half of them get a prize. It might only be a tier 3 limited, but you're still getting a prize. So it is a lot more accessible, a lot more likely that you'll get rewards. So that's why I'm looking to build our first ever limited team. Now if limited cards were available when I joined the game a few months back, I would have definitely just started with them, rather than splashing a lot of cash on some rare cards. But the aim here is we're going to use so rare data, which is a very handy tool if you didn't already know. We're going to search for our limited cards, find the players to buy. I'm going to try and keep it a budget-friendly squad, but I also want it to be a squad that is going to push for the top spots. So, for example, if we looked at how the Global All-Star is set out this week, if we look down Division 4, you can see you need to finish in the top 500 to get a Tier 3 Limited, but I kind of want to be aiming to the for the top 150. I feel like that's a good bracket to be aiming for. So if I go back a few weeks to the first or the most recent game week where there was a full fixtures in available. So you can see there was 2,500 people entered this week because there were games going on. It was before the international break. So I want to be finishing roughly in the top 150 or at least be competitive. So we might go top 200. So top 200, we need to be aiming for roughly 288 points. That's quite a lot of points for those of you who are brand new each player can get up to 100 points, then you can get boosts on them as well, but it's roughly up to 100 points for each player. So you can see 288 points can be quite hard to get, but we're going to be aiming for that. Obviously, you guys can start with a limited squad. That would be challenging for rewards in Division 5. That would be a lot cheaper than the squad I'm going to build, obviously. And you could still earn some quite good rewards. Some weeks you might even still finish top if your players have a good week. But I'm going to try and do as much research as I can here to build a squad that gives me the best chance. It's going to be a little bit over budget potentially, but we're going to try and build a very good squad. So let's get looking over on So Red Data and let's go see what cards are available. Now I'm not going to buy these cards today. I'm going to get them all ready, maybe get two per position who I'm interested in and saved on to my watch list. I think it's empty at the moment, it is. So I'm going to add maybe two per position to that. And then I'll surprise you guys next week with the players we've bought. Now, if we go over to the scout and the player finder, you can see the options we have available. So I'm going to search for our goalkeeper first because they are the most expensive. So I want to get that out of the way. League-wise, I'm going to go Champion Europe and Challenger Europe. And then I'm also going to bring the age down to 26. Now, that might get adjusted a bit higher. But I want a squad here that is going to last me a few seasons. I want a squad that has some potential about it, some growth that could come with it. I don't want to buy some 31, 32 year olds, although they may be better. 
I don't want to buy them and have to get rid of them at the end of the season. If you guys are coming in and just want a team for the end of the year, I'd recommend looking for players who are over 30 if they're regular starters because they're going to be cheaper and they're going to bring in quite a good return. They'll be almost guaranteed starters, so it might be a good way to do it if you're really on a budget, but I'm going to be willing to pay a little bit more here and lower the age down. Other requirements I have for this squad is last 15 games, they need to have started 85% of them. Last five games, they need to have started all of them. I don't care anymore. They need to have started all the last five games. They need to have started 85% of the others. At the moment, I'm happy to leave the score as anything. Anything at all. But then, as we get more options available, I might boost the score up. The score is this margin here. I'm actually going to drop it down a little bit. So we've got between 30 and 70. But if we want to be aiming for that 288... If we divide that by the five players who will be in our squad, we need to be getting 57.6 per player. Now, obviously, that's not a golden rule. Some players could get 70 and some then 40. Everything like that balances out. But on average, we need to be getting 57.6 per player. So we need to keep that in mind when we're building this squad. In terms of price, I'm just going to set this quite cheap to start with. In fact, it's just set it to what my budget is at the moment and we'll see if we can add any players in straight away and maybe get them bought now obviously if players don't turn up then we won't be able to get them but we'll definitely give them a look i could put in here about injury and suspension but if they've started the last 85 percent of the 15 games and started 100 percent the last five the chances of them being injured is quite slim i'll also do a bit more research on them that's one of the bonuses of doing these two big divisions because there's a lot more data available to see if they are actually injured. But let's get searching. There are no goalkeepers available for that price. So let's just keep up in this price until we find some. Goalkeepers and forwards are the most expensive of the cards. So don't worry if you're having to put out quite a bit to get these players. It will more than likely be the case. Midfielders and defenders are going to be dirt cheap. You're going to have to spend most of your budget on your defender and your or your goalkeeper, I should say, and your striker. So don't worry about that. You can see we've got four options, all of them fairly young, all of them decent price. Now, come to think of it, with goalkeepers, I don't mind them being a little bit older because their careers do last a bit longer as well. So if I boost it from 26 to 28, does that give us more options? It gives us two more options. Are they cheaper? This guy looks fairly cheap, and he hasn't played too bad. So we'll get him opened up. And I also like the look of this Thomas over here as well. So both these are quite expensive. 103 and £92 each. But both of them are regular starters. Or I should say they maybe that just they weren't playing them game weeks. They were playing. So this is something here where it would be quite beneficial to go maybe look up this team. And just make sure that this player isn't only playing because of an injury to another goalkeeper. Because that might mean his starting spot will go when that other goalkeeper comes back. Something to keep an eye on. But if we look at maybe this guy, we can see he also, bit part player there, not playing some games. So I'm going to stay clear of them too. And I'm actually going to go over to the last 40 games and make sure that this is up at roughly 80% as well. Just to make sure we're not getting players who are only playing for certain reasons so we can see these guys here especially this guy who's 24 he's played quite a lot he's played 100% of most of their games I'm going to boost it up again to 30 just to see what we can get we've got one more player come in he's 29 decent ish scores we're not obviously going to be able to get an incredible goalkeeper here with the budget we're going in at and you can see here this guy also not playing too regularly before this game week here, but since then playing consistently. So at the moment, I'm happy with these two keepers. So I'm going to add both of these to my watch list. I'm not going to do the whole research on all these players in this video. Like I said, I'm going to pick roughly two per position, and then we'll see how things go. But these two keepers, over the course of the next few weeks maybe next week I should say, I'm going to do some research on them. I'm going to make sure they are the starting keepers, 
make sure that there isn't other injuries in the squad that are the reason why they're playing. Just things like that. Make sure that their teams aren't going to get relegated. Because if their teams get relegated, we might not be able to get points from them playing anymore. So things like that, the extra research I'm going to do outside of this video. But you can see here we've got our two goalkeepers. If I just open up the watch list over here. You can see we've got our two goalkeepers ready and selected there. So I'm okay with them too at the moment. That is obviously subject to change. But in terms of goalkeepers, I think we've got ours sorted. So now I'm actually going to go straight over to the forwards market. I'm going to do that because that won't require me to adjust the prices. We're going to need these prices to be quite high still for the forwards. You can see actually zero forwards available for the markets we've got selected at the moment. I'm going to lower down the started recent games then and put all of these down to 80% just to see what that brings up. And that gives us four players available now. We've got quite a few options here. You can see pretty much all of the, Well, these three here have all started their most recent five games, which is a good start. Some good points returns. Not obviously the 57 we're looking for. I think we're going to be getting that from our midfield and defence. But they're still decent returns. 40, 46, 45, 58 from this guy over here. And he is only 23. So that's not too bad. And if we look at his most recent games, he has started quite a lot. Only down at £84. I think he's a definite shout for us. Definitely worth looking into for him. Especially at only 23 as well. We then got this guy who is 22 over at Izzard Altmar. Again, consistent starter. Very nice to see. And then we've got this guy who's a little bit older, which might not be the worst thing in the world. And he's at the French League, which is quite positive. It's a big enough league to be able to check on how players are doing. And he's only down at £26.15. pence. Very cheap. Very cheap, actually, compared to the other players. He is a definite... And then we're going to add both of these two in as well. So I think we've got our three strikers there available for us. So we've got two goalkeepers, three forward players. We will get one goalkeeper for sure. Whether or not we get two is probably a definite no. I don't know why I even debated that. Forwards, we might end up getting more than one forward. We might use our extra spot as an additional forward. Especially with that one being so cheap. Down only £26. I don't understand why he's only £26. Obviously, he could be down in price because of injury that he might have just sustained. Or because of the fact that maybe another player's come back. I'll find out that information in the research afterwards. I'll go through this team in next week's video. Or the week after, depending on how far away I am with these videos. But we'll go through this team once it's all bought. So don't worry about that. Next up then, we're going to be looking at defenders. Now, in terms of defenders... I'm going to lower this price down because when I press search here, 13, a lot more defenders available. So let's get this lowered down quite a bit. And you can see down to 12 there still. Let's get this lowered down even further. We've got 9 still available. And then we've got still 9 here. So I think this is a good place to start. Now, in terms of players who have been playing well, let's just take a quick look at the scores. We've got this guy here. Let's get these strikers closed down first but we've got this guy at Royal Antwerp who looks like he's been playing quite well in terms of just all green we've got a few so I'm going to get them selected up I would ideally like them to all be above 50 so these two are the ones that are standing out at the moment let's get him closed down now you can see in terms of prices for these ones, again, down at £20. Really cheap to be able to get your starter squad built, especially when we're looking at players who are younger than what you'd normally go for, possibly, who are playing a little bit better as well, who are regular starters. It's going to be a lot easier to build a cheaper squad if you want to be a bit more risky and keep your budget down. But this guy in defence looks very good. Some very decent high scores coming in. Never really doing a bad performance. You can see here he did get 8 points in that one game. Which isn't great. But the rest of the games have looked fairly comfortable. And down at only £21, that wouldn't be too bad of an option. So I'm definitely going to get him added in. 
And then we've got this guy over here as well. Looks like we're building an Eredivisie team, to be honest, which isn't too bad. Because it means we could, if we wanted, go in at that Division 5 level in the Challenger or Champion Europe, depending on which one the Eredivisie is in. Which would be a nice little option for us to have. This guy as well, ah, you see, that, that period there alarms me. If it's an injury, okay, that's not too bad. If it was because he got dropped, obviously not ideal. But only 22 We've got potential to get some years out with this guy. £40 is probably a little bit more than what I'd want to spend, but I'll definitely add him to the list. Because he's a bit of a iffy one, I do want to add a third defender to our options. And I think I found our third defender. 24 years old, in the Belgian league, playing for Ghent, a fairly decent team. Not worried about them ever going down. He's got some very good scores in recently. Still fairly young as well. Only £16 for him definitely add him to the list and now we've got midfielders to go for so we've already sorted now our goalkeeper situation our defenders our forwards we've just got our midfielders to do next and then we'll have a quick look to see how much this is possibly going to cost us and then see what potential score lines we might get for these players as well so let's go to midfield next. Midfield, you do tend to have quite a few options as well. Only four for us here, so we might up the price or the ages or something, unless we find some good options here. This guy looks very good. I've not heard of that team before in Eredivisie. Let's just check where they are. Fortuna Sidad. So they are actually in eighth. It's only two games in, obviously, so it's not too much to worry about yet. I'll obviously look at who's the recently promoted teams, who's the recently relegated anything like that in the leagues just to make sure we don't have any teams that potentially might go down but that's the one thing about these limited cards that's so good if the team does go down you're only risking 15 20 pounds it's not too bad and if you're going for young players you don't have to worry about it too much either it's actually quite a nice little situation to be in but he does look good played 100 percent of the last 15 games 98 percent of the last 40 only 24 years old decent return on scores only 19 pounds definitely down as an interesting point for him so i'm going to add him down to our watch list this guy over here is young playing quite often for saint etienne which is a nice return to have but at 52 dollars a bit out of our price range for a budget squad. He might be one we upgrade to maybe in a few weeks after we start getting our rewards. Who knows? But I do want to keep the rest of the team quite budget friendly. So we've got these two players here who are either $37 or 34 It seems to be this guy who's standing out at the moment as the better option. He's a bit older, yes, but he has also played a bit more regularly, which is a good sign. So we're definitely going to add him to the list as well if we look at them scores decent return for him so that is the players i'm looking at now we've got two goalkeepers multiple defenders multiple midfielders and multiple forwards we've got a lot of players there available to select all of them are starting players all of them are fit all of them are young it's very decent so what i'm going to do is actually sort by best last five games and choose a forward, defender, midfielder and goalkeeper. See how much, and an extra player of course as well. See how much that squad would cost to build. And see where it would have placed us in the most recent fully stacked game week. So I'll be right back once I've got that worked out. So this team, consisting of Jean Fleming, this guy, this guy, this guy and this guy. Will cost us, at the moment... And this is probably a little bit more than what you'd expect because we're going to go in with some offers for these players. We're not going to pay the requested price. £285.97. That's obviously quite a lot, but these are the highest performers out of the players we've got. I might look to adjust it depending on ages and who's played better longer term, who's a team that's less likely to get relegated, things like that. I might look to adjust so this price could go up or down for the final team we go with. Roughly £300 for a squad that is starting regularly, going to get us points for the whole season. Isn't that bad of a price? Obviously, you guys could go in cheaper. You could get maybe a goalkeeper who doesn't play, who's really cheap, and then put that extra bit of money into your midfield, defence, forwards, who get the extra points. You guys who've watched this channel and watched through the Soraya videos will know that 
we've actually had a goalkeeper in our squad who was a common card in the other divisions and we've had like a 50% negative effect on him and we've still got very close to the thresholds so you can still do it if one potentially two players aren't playing a week but you if you really want to be consistently performing on so rare and getting in a regular reward structure you do need starting players but if you're just starting out there's no reason why you can't just build a kind of reserve substitute team kind of thing who occasionally get points for really cheap and then build it up with the rewards as you go obviously that is an option so £285 here for the best team out of the players we've got, which isn't awful. I'd like to keep it down a little bit. I'd like to kind of keep this below 250 if possible, which, if you have just came to so rare, is actually quite cheap for a team because some of the actual rare cards for other teams, they cost above that price alone. In fact, some of the limited cards even cost an absolute fortune. Some of the limited cards, if I can actually find them on here... You can see some of the limited cards. I can't find any that I recognise yet. So there we go. Moussa Dembele and Lafont. Lafont obviously playing for Nantes in League 1. You can see £382. So there's already players out there that are costing more than our whole team. Get one of them in a reward and you've already made your money back. Most of our money for this team is coming from the goalkeeper and from the forward. As you'd understand, the rest of the players are fairly cheap. So that is a pattern you're going to have to recognise as well. But if we go through now, and I'll grab the last 15 score on average for each of these players and see what we would get on a regular game week, hopefully if the team's consistent enough, and then we'll see where that would have left us on the game week where everyone played most recently before the international break. So let me go figure this out. 251 points this team would have got us on average over the last 15 game weeks. Obviously, this changes massively depending on what's happened in the game week. So you can see, for example, this goalkeeper one week might get you 88. Another, he might get you 11. It changes drastically. You'll also have the captain's boost on one player. So this is a really rough idea of how much this team will get us. So it's just, just for curiosity's sake it's definitely got no proper backing behind it but 251 points would have put us roughly around the 460 mark that might sound bad 460 but if we look at the current week here over on global all stars division 5 you can see there's 840 people in it and 487 of them placed the amount that get placed depends on the amount of people that have entered the competition. So, for example, on this game week, where there was, in fact, 2,500, I can safely say we would have definitely got a reward that week, which is really nice to see. It might not have been the greatest of rewards. It might have just been a tier 2 or a tier 1 or even a tier 3, but we would have got a reward that week. So I think this team of 5 here is going to consistently bring in rewards weekly. That might come back to bite me, but I think that will definitely be the case. So what I'm going to do now over the course of the next few days is go through this watch list, fully research every player. Might even take a few days to do it and not rush through it at all. I'm going to research the teams that they play for, research the leagues they're in, everything to know about these players so we don't make any mistakes. And then either at the start of the next video or the video after that i'll show you guys the team we built and then hopefully in the weeks to come after that the rewards we got from this team so hopefully you've enjoyed this video please hit the subscribe button if you're new and the like button if you've enjoyed let me know down below if you've built a limited team or if you've just gone straight in with the rare cards or let me know if you're still just messing around with your commons but thank you for watching i look forward to hearing your story so far and i'll see you guys next time